this box right here, we have the Acer Aspire Vero, which apparently is made from largely recycled materials, which is great if it's a good laptop. If it isn't, then it's just e-waste either way, so who cares? Let's get right into it. Oh. So here we have a box. The box is 100% recycled paper, and I believe 100% recyclable, which is cool. Oh yes, it says it right there. They used soy ink. They also, instead of using plastic on the charger, use this little recharge the planet cardboard thing. One thing I just want to note here is that depending on how you're thinking of saving the planet, cardboard can be good or bad because it takes a lot more energy to make cardboard than plastic sometimes. But then plastic ends up in the ocean for years and years. Uh, it's a really difficult problem. <laughs> I'm not going to do a lifetime analysis on all of the parts of this computer. I had to do a course on that. It's actually really interesting. Anyway, here's the laptop. Let's just give it a little, oh, oh, it's, it's big. And this is a really cool texture. Also, whatever they put it in, feels really nice, it's very soft. And I am guessing this is a bunch of documentation to tell you how good of a person you are, yes. To be clear, I think that this is an awesome product and I'm really glad that they're doing this, but so much of the marketing materials is just, it's over the top. It's just like, it's so wanky. So here it is, the recycled plastic laptop. And I have to say, this finish is really cool. Like this is a $700 laptop. Realistically, you're going up against a bit of stamped aluminum, mostly plastic chassis. And this one I have to say, damn, they did a good job. Like I'm pressing here and you can see that the whole thing is flexing a little bit, but it's the whole thing flexing. It isn't like squishy, weird areas. Their chassis rigidity is really good. I, I think it looks good too, Jono. Like, what do you think? Ooh, that's a nice color. Yeah. yeah. It's a cool color. It's got some texture. It's got the little like yellow grainy things. I want to feel this. You want to feel it? Yeah. Give it a stroke, Jono. Ooh. Yeah. It feels like you'd have to pay extra for that. Initial impressions, very positive, I have to say. Before I turn it on, Let's have a look at the IO here. So USB type C, two type A's, a full size HDMI, that's 2.0 spec and an ethernet jack. Right there's power input, headphone microphone combo, another type A and a Kensington lock. That's really solid actually. Has real several years ago vibes, but like in a good way. Actually, should we sticker bomb it? No, don't do it. Screen's a bit floppy. <laughs> the whole thing is, a bit on the heavy side for sure. Let's bring out our scale here. 1.8 kilograms, which is four pounds. That's a lot of pounds for a laptop that, well, it's not very powerful. It's not supposed to be super powerful, but it's like a four core i7, I believe. 25, 30 watts of cooling is all that's needed. It's a lot of weight for that. <laughs> Size it up with a banana. Uh, banana for scale. Is that a thing we're doing now, Jono? LTTstore.com, banana. I want to see data sheets on this banana, Jono. About 1.8 bananas in width. <laughs> According to the bananas, they're all six inches. Okay, anyway. <laughs> now I want to turn it on, but what I want to do even more is segue into our sponsor, Vessi. Thanks to Vessi Footwear for sponsoring today's video. Vessi's footwear is known for being lightweight, easy to pack, comfortable, and most importantly, waterproof. You won't have to worry about the weather anymore. The shoes are made with a material called Dymatex, which keeps your feet cool in the summer and warm in the winter. They're easy to slip on and off, and lots of us here at LMG wear them all the time. Keep your feet dry for the future wet months and save $25 off with the offer code shortcircuit at vessi.com slash shortcircuit. Before we get into it, <laughs> instead of having the text like however you normally text on a laptop. It's actually like pressed into this. It looks pretty cool, although I have heard it described as looking kind of like soap and I understand that. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid this screen is already at max brightness. Oh, it isn't, perfect. Oh, uh, it's still not very bright. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
So Brandon, I'm going to try my best to notch this display, but I am going to have to get lightly mad at Acer because they do this thing all the time where they have these displays that are not great at producing green specifically. Because green's kind of hard to do. Your eyes are very sensitive to it. And then they have these very green backgrounds that just look terrible. It is because their logo is green, but like, look at this. It's so much better now. I, I changed the background and now this display looks great instead of just looking like, I don't know, someone had a bunch of wasabi and threw up. But it looks good now. At this price range, it's a sort of thing where you don't know if you're getting good core bits of a laptop. This is expensive enough, like $700. It all needs to be good. Nothing can get in the way of you using it. But sometimes companies take shortcuts in ways that makes it terrible to use. And it really doesn't seem like Acer's done that here. So we have a nice large trackpad. I'm actually surprised at how nice and large it is. It feels great to use. The top of it is, is this glass coated? Yeah, I believe this is a glass top trackpad. It's actually a really good one. I'm surprised. I don't think this trackpad's made of recycled plastic. <laughs> Let's go quickly to their eco claims. So 50% of the keycaps are recycled, 30% of the chassis and bezels, and all of it was built in ways that reduce CO2 emissions by 21%. All of which is pretty cool, but which does not mention the trackpad, which I'm guessing they just bought from somewhere. For something like the trackpad, I'm not going to grade it on being green or not, of if it's made of recycled materials, I'm going to grade it on being green of if I can replace it down the line. I think that matters way more, but we'll get there later. So first of all, Norden, you can just go die in a hole. Taskbar settings, I need it over to the left. This is a very good keyboard, I have to say. It's got a nice little snap at the start, lots of travel afterwards, and overall the key stability is pretty good. I like it. I would give it a solid A. Not quite A+, but you'll be happy. It's also even a numpad. <laughs> Now, as for the display, I am guessing this is 1080p. This looks like maybe 300 nits. It's not particularly bright, although when you're looking at it straight on, it's honestly fine. I'm not getting any weird like reflections or crap from the back there, even though there is a massive light and it has caused problems for other laptops that have reflective screens. It's not amazing, but also I don't think you'll hate it. Oh, one thing about the keyboard that I didn't point out right there, they have R and E backwards and yellow. Another cool Windows 11 feature, if you go to set up the fingerprint reader and you don't already have a pin, you need to leave the menu and then go back in for the setup icon to appear. Honestly, it reminds me a lot of Windows 10 when it first came out and it broke all my audio drivers and crap. And the real test of this fingerprint reader is if it wakes up the laptop Okay, that's pretty good. I feel like it's the kind of thing where if I just improve the recognition on my finger a bit, it might be better. Either way, that was fast enough for me. The important bit of that is that I don't want to come all the way over, hit the power button, and then have to hit the fingerprint sensor, because that's stupid. I want to be able to just hit the fingerprint sensor and get logged in. That's what this does. Love it. Actually, before we get too into Crab Rave, one thing that I would like to see is 16 by 10. I always say it every single time. If the display came down here a little bit further, I would be happier. Okay, that's actually pretty solid. It's not super loud, but I can hear everything from the highs and mids and lows, which is kind of all you can ask for in laptop speakers. They're not incredible blow you away level, but I think it's acceptable for sure. That said, of course, we have to put it up against the XPS as is tradition, even though the XPS, the MacBook just ended it, but whatever, we're still here. Hey, sir. That sounds broken. Did Windows 11 break my drivers and that's why the Mac sounded so much better? Dell, ugh. It looks way better. That's probably the thing that you'll notice even more. I wasn't expecting them to be close, but side by side, geez, like. <laughs> Although, if we don't look at the laptop that has a $400 display on it, I would say that this is perfectly usable. I wouldn't want to create content on it. Your stuff's not gonna turn out right. I would probably just pull out my phone. It probably has a more accurate display. 
But if you're watching stuff on this, like you're going on YouTube or watching Netflix or I don't know, Crave TV or whatever, you're gonna be perfectly happy with this. I guess this, <laughs> that's kind of like this whole laptop just summarized in one thing. None of it's amazing, but none of it's offensively bad. So for performance, we have an i7 1195G7. So that's four cores, eight threads. Frankly, this would be a better laptop if it was AMD. Incredibly good cheap processors and you'd have eight cores and eight cores is better than four. AMD is also more power efficient and this only has a 48 watt hour battery. They do say this will be good for like nine and a half hours of battery life and it probably is actually good for like seven. So like, that's not bad. I don't know how many people that buy these will need eight cores ever, but it does just make multitasking nicer. You also have 16 gigabytes of RAM, 500 gigabyte SSD. Oh, beautiful. Intel Wi-Fi 6 AX201. In these sort of mid-range laptops, they sometimes cheap out on the Wi-Fi card. I don't know, save that money somewhere else. And Iris XE integrated graphics. And we might as well test them right now. This seems pretty not bad, actually. It seems pretty close to 60 at 1080p on low. I might even be able to take it to medium. Yeah, we got medium grass. Okay, this feels like more like 40 now, but like... Oh yeah. <laughs> Is that better? You can sort of see it. I can't screen cap on this laptop, Brandon. <laughs> You're not gonna play Battlefield 2042 or anything, but like, this is totally acceptable. We've already done videos on Intel XE graphics. Expect like 1080p medium low settings games, which is pretty good for a lot of people. The most important thing about this laptop though, is it repairable? Let's take a look. It's all Phillips head screws. They're all the same length. Super easy to get into. The Loctite that they used on these screws is color matched with the little feet. Couple screws and a guitar pick and you are in, wow. This looks like everything was designed for a 13 or 14 inch laptop and they just put it in a 15. <laughs> I'm surprised by the amount of cooling in this. We've got two fans, two rather pinner heat pipes, but like there's quite a bit of exhaust for a four core mobile chip. Like that's pretty darn good. For how much CPU there is, that's a lot of fins. So basics first, you have a single SODIMM slot. So you can upgrade the RAM, but unfortunately the other eight gigabytes are soldered to the back of the motherboard. So unless you're like into SMD repair. We also have our SSD right here. It looks like that's the only one you can have, but it is upgradable. So points there. Battery is super easy. Look at that. It just comes right out. Trackpad, damn. Yeah, there's the trackpad whole thing. You can just replace it. What I'm trying to see right now is if the keyboard's replaceable. Because if it is, that would be awesome. There's the whole motherboard. That's that's the whole thing right there. Keyboard's plastic welded in, so that's not well, repairable. But everything else seems like it is. Not quite full marks, but good job Acer. You can replace motherboard pretty easily. Battery super easily. I guess the cooling if you wanted to, those don't normally go bad. Storage, RAM. I guess your IO if you so happened to spill some water on that or something. And the trackpad. So overall, the Acer Vero is a laptop that is quite upgradable. I think it looks good. And if you're into your computer being recycled, go for it, really. At $700, I would strongly recommend it. There's no super big downsides. And if you're into the environment, bonus. Yeah, now I have to put it back together. Great. If you guys like this video, hit like, get subscribed, and tell your trackpad that you like it. And if you have a track point, um, 